In the Falcon and Winter Soldier series on Disney+, Plus, Joaquin Torres is an adorable member of the United States Air Force. But did you know that in the comics, he's actually a human-falcon hybrid? Joaquin is one of my favorite heroes to join Marvel Comics in the past 10 years, and despite being a new character, he's already made his mark on the universe. So, let's talk about him. Torres made his first full appearance in Captain America Sam Wilson number 3 in 2015, and was created by Nick Spencer and Daniel Acuna. When Sam Wilson took up the mantle of Captain America after Steve Rogers was drained of his super soldier serum, he set up a national hotline in order to better serve the American people. One of his first missions was to locate a missing kid named Joaquin Torres. Torres was a dreamer who immigrated to the United States as a child, and at the age of 17, he took it upon himself to deliver food, water, and medicine to refugees looking to cross the Mexican border. Unfortunately, Torres was abducted by a hate group called the Sons of the Serpent, who sold him to the mad scientist Dr. Carl Mollis for experimentation. Sam wasted no time in apprehending the serpent, and tried to take down Mollis, but was caught by surprise and captured when the doctor showed off his new powers. While Sam was out cold, Mollus had turned him into a werewolf, and if you would like more information about that, then check out my dedicated video about all the times that's happened in the Captain America comics. The fact that it's happened more than once is really weird, yet fascinating to me. It makes no damn sense. Compels me, though. Anyway, in addition to giving Sam this fuzzy makeover, Mollus genetically spliced Joaquin with Sam's Falcon companion, Red Wing. Move over, Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin Falcon is here. That was really bad even by my standards. I am so sorry. Sam was able to defeat Mollus and save them both, but while his wolf form was only temporary and he slowly changed back over time, Joaquin's condition was permanent. Why is that? Well, the answer is bonkers, so buckle up. Okay, so in an earlier storyline, Sam and Red Wing encountered a vampire named Baron Blood. Well, a bird versus a literal vampire is a pretty one-sided fight, so Blood sunk his teeth into Red Wing and nearly killed him. Wilson was able to get Baron Blood to retreat before he could finish draining Red Wing, and as a result, the bird is now a vampire because comics. In addition to that, Sam actually has a psychic connection to all birds, especially Red Wing, thanks to the villain Red Skull messing with them with a powerful relic called a Cosmic Cube. Again, because comics. As a result of all these comic book shenanigans, Joaquin's condition is irreversible, but he also gained a healing factor and a psychic connection to Red Wing, Sam, and all other birds. To better understand these changes, Torres was left in the care of Dr. Claire Temple, a physician that specializes in metahumans. But since Joaquin would leave his room and, you know, act like a teenager that just developed powers, he needed to be handcuffed to his bed. This proved to be an issue when Sam was stripped of his wings and was thrown out a window while investigating a group called the Serpent Society. But because of his psychic connection to Wilson, Joaquin managed to burst out of confinement, fly over there, and scoop him up right in the nick of time. As a quick aside, that flight over there is the first glimpse that we get of Torres being a chaotically horny mess that I wholeheartedly relate to. So after proving his worth as a sidekick, Joaquin took it upon himself to become the new Falcon without consulting Sam. But fun fact, this green costume is actually a modernized update of the original one that Wilson wore. That's a great little detail that I love. Really though, while the new Falcon was a staple of Sam's time in the Captain America series, he didn't really do all that much of note, just tagging along on some missions and occasionally getting his own focus stories, like the time that some racist Fox News stand-ins were calling for Torres to be deported. The other main storyline that Joaquin got was his budding friendship with fellow hero, Rage. The two of them were shaping up to become a fun crime-fighting duo in the same style as Luke Cage and Iron Fist. That is, until Rage was unjustly incarcerated, when it looked like that he was robbing a pawn shop that he was in all actuality saving. This wouldn't get too much time to develop though, because Sam's Captain America series was cut short when it was revealed that the Red Skull had been messing around with the Cosmic Cube… again. But this time, he used it to rewrite the entire history of Steve Rogers, making it to where he was actually a Hydra sleeper agent this entire time. After amassing political power, Steve took over the United States in the name of Hydra, with several heroes working in the shadows as a resistance group. Almost all of Marvel's young heroes were included in this, especially their premier teen team, the Champions. When Joaquin joined the Resistance, he got in really close with the Champions, basically becoming an honorary member. And when most of the Resistance thought that the strategy to take Hydra down was to find the shattered pieces of the Cosmic Cube to turn Steve back to normal, Black Widow instead thought that the better solution was to just 
take him out. The champions tagged along with Black Widow, helping her fight bad guys and gain intel, all the while trying to convince her that killing Hydra Cap wasn't the right move. That ultimately didn't work though, and Evil Steve was defeated with the help of much, much more contrived comic book nonsense. But hey, at least it was a neat side story, and Joaquin got some training from one of the greatest Marvel assassins of all time. When the world turned back to normal, Joaquin went back to helping Mexican migrants, and Sam took up the mantle of Falcon once again. But he didn't give Joaquin the heads up, which is pretty uncool. Now, in the Marvel Universe, it's not uncommon for two characters to use the same codename at once. I mean, hell, Sam was Captain America at the exact same time as Steve Rogers for a bit. So sharing a name is something that he's at least super used to. What really does suck, though, is that even though Torres was already established as Sam's partner, he kind of got ditched in favor of this other guy, Patriot. That being said, Joaquin had officially joined the champions around this time, but he was kind of just a reserve member and frankly didn't do all that much. So if the excuse was that Torres was just too busy on the group to be Sam's sidekick, then that's a pretty flimsy excuse. It honestly felt like Joaquin was straight up replaced, which to me as a fan, majorly sucks. Oh well. At least we got these issues of Sam, Torres, and Patriot working together, which was admittedly pretty cool and very wholesome. At the time of this recording, Joaquin really hasn't been seen around in the comics, mostly because of an in-universe law that banned minors from being superheroes, which has kept him and several other young heroes from doing much of anything. But I hope that once the restriction is eventually lifted, then we'll see Torres back in action, and hopefully with a unique superhero identity that he can really make his own. Joaquin Torres was a character that was heavily panned by folks who don't actually read comic books, because they saw him as a push towards forced diversity, especially because he was introduced around the same time as many other minority superheroes. As we've seen in the past with characters like Miles Morales, getting a spotlight in broader media is only a good thing for these characters. It attracts new fans, which drowns out the haters, and it almost always leads to more and better development for the character in the comics. If you want to read about Joaquin and judge him for yourself, then the best place to start is the Captain America Sam Wilson series. I have links to buy it both physically and digitally in the comments down below. So do yourself and me a favor by buying it, because going through that link does help out the channel, and I would really appreciate it. But if you like this video, then why not consider subscribing, or even watching another one? And in fact, if you like this, then there's probably a good chance that you'll like more Captain America content, so I have a playlist with every single one of my Captain America videos, so give those a watch. Please, I would really appreciate it. But anyway, I hope you learned at least a little something new, and hopefully, I'll see you next time.